where there's a risk, chances are there'll be somebody willing to take it. But when it all goes wrong, the brave adventurer can end up praying for a hero. Kia ora, I'm Philip Alpers, and this is Heroes, the programme about New Zealanders who risk their lives to save others. Tonight, a kayak wedged firmly in a torrent, its occupant jammed inside, swallowing white water. And a mother who can't swim watches as her baby is swept out to sea. North of Wairua, the Ruakatori River is a good place to get knocked around while soaking wet. Kayakers love it. Here, actors recreate the true story of one such adventurer, Brendan Godwin. It was February 1992. Even in summer, the Ruakatori is swift enough to attract kayakers. This Saturday, four young canoeists were heading upriver. They'd spent the morning in calm water teaching Boy Scouts. Now it was time for a rougher ride. Been kayaking all morning and taking scouts down an easy part of the river. In the afternoon, we decided that we were going to move further up the river where it, it became a bit sort of more challenging. Brendan Godwin was then 21. He'd done this stretch before, always checking in first with local ranger Dave Withers. It's going up through Papanui Station. Okay, make sure you check in with the station manager, won't you? Yeah, we'll do. Should be out of here by about 4.30. Yeah, weather's closing in a bit, so keep an eye on it, huh? Yeah, thanks. Okay. See ya. See ya. With Brendan was another experienced kayaker, Blair Slavin. Their girlfriends dropped them off. We then took the guys right up the top of the river where they do their stretch of kayaking, which I mean, about the fourth, fifth time actually they've done that section. See you at four. See you later. See ya. Both Jenny and Cherie were keen canoeists, but not quite this keen. It's called a seal dive, followed by an Eskimo roll. If you're going to get wet, you might as well do it straight away. Meanwhile, the two women drove ahead down the valley. As their partners stopped off for a chocolate break, Jenny and Cherie settled in to wait for them downriver. Cherie was busting to tell her friends some good news. Brandy and I are getting engaged. Wow, when? Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Thanks. Back on the river, their men were bearing down on a very narrow, rocky stretch of rapid. Blair made it safely through, Brendan didn't. Suddenly his mate was jammed solid with half the river on his back. Brendan! Brendan! Give me out! Give me out! Give me out of your place! Go get help! Get out! Get out! The nose of the kayak was pinned under the rocks. No effort of Blair's could wrench it loose. In the end, Brendan had to yell at him to leave and to run for help. It was a steep gorge, tough going in rough country. Blair Slavin ran for what seemed like ages before he reached help. He's stuck. Blair, what's happened? <laughs> He can't be dead. Cherie, take you, go back to the farm, get help now, go! I don't want to see Brendan! Go back, get help! At that go. point, I just split in two. There was Jenny there, and there was somewhat, there was me up here controlling what I was doing, and it was, I wasn't allowed to feel anything. They were a long way from anywhere. By the time Cherie raised the alarm, her fiancé had been trapped for two hours. My heart was just pounding. It was, you know, it was just going nine to the dozen, and I'm thinking, no, it can't be Brendan. No, it can't be. You know, he must be all right. Heading back up the gorge, Blair was exhausted, but Jenny needed him to show the way. Heading down the valley, unaware of any of this, was a shepherd from Papanui Station, James Aramoana Jr. Racing up the valley towards the rapids was Cherie. She'd found another local shepherd, T. 
Ted you know Tahuri. Where are you off to? Oh, I was going to take some videos up the road, man. Some joke is lost up the river. We might need a hand to get him out, please. Oh, yeah, I'll follow you up. Around this time, Brendan Godwin remembers giving up. He couldn't feel a thing below his waist, and finally he just dropped his head into the water and left it there. Here they are! Where is he? Let's go! Wait here for search and rescue, OK? He'll be fine. Cherie couldn't believe that. She'd already been told that Brendan was dead. When they finally arrived, the rescuers were sure they'd found a body, until Jenny reached out and touched him. And I just tapped him on the shoulder. I never expected him to pop his head up, and he did. And I just felt so relieved because I didn't have to go back and tell anyone, look, Brendan's dead. But he looked me straight in the face, and I'll never forget it, and he asked me to get him out. We went to pull him out, and Brendan just reached up with his arms and grabbed whatever was closest, and it just happened to be Jimmy's dreadlocks. He was... Um, um, exercising his vocabulary at that stage. So were the others. Three fit men on a rope, and that kayak would not budge. It was obvious to Ted Tahuri they'd need more than brute strength. We'll need tools! I'll go! And when the ranger Dave Withers arrived, Cherie was waiting to show him the way. He's still alive. I'm just going to get more tools. Okay. You stay here, right? When we moved down uh, into the gorge where the uh, where uh, Brendan was trapped, um, uh, Ted was on his way out then to uh, to get some st uh, straining fencing gear, st wire strainers, and uh, and uh, a crowbar and axe, anything that uh, we might be able to try and use to open the canoe up. In the meantime, all the men could do was form a dam with their bodies. And by this time the river started coming up, it started raining and the water was getting right on quite hard. So I sort of just laid across a rock just to divert the water away from going over the top of his head. Brendan had been trapped in the tough plastic kayak for nearly four hours. James watched as his father arrived to help. Barehanded, James Senior tried to shift the rocks, crushing the canoeist's feet. Oh, was I level to the river, and I could see it getting higher and higher, just through the colour, and then you could tell. We all live in the mountains, and we're always very aware of the river and its changing moods. And, you know, within a matter of half an hour, it can become from a nice idle flowing river to a raging torrent. I know what hypothermia looks like, and his hands were absolutely white, and the ends of his fingers had gone dark, dark blue and his face was white and his lips were just blue. And I kept sitting there thinking, he's going to die. Kayaking the Ruakaturi River, Brendan Godwin crashed into a hole between rocks. His mate, Blair Slavin, stumbled down the gorge for help. But hours later, when rescuers raced in from up and down the valley, the badly hurt canoeist was still trapped in a rising river. They assumed they'd be pulling out a body, but under the torrent, Brendan was still just alive. We realised that everything we had tried with the wire strainers, the crowbar to smash open the canoe, nothing was successful. We, we had to make a quick decision, and that was the, uh, the helicopter the uh, rescue helicopter from Wairau. The weather was a real worry, but Andy Shaw and his team had been told they were Brendan's only hope. The police thought that they were looking for a body, but in the meantime we got a call on our base radio from Dave Withers, who is the local search and rescue coordinator up the Rukaturi, and uh, he informed my wife that uh, the person was very much alive and to get the helicopter up here very quickly. Just as we got to Rukaturi, we ran into very heavy rain. We could see the river was very high and rising, and uh, we got to the scene. There was a whole um, group of locals shielding uh, Brendan from the water. So initially we, we just dropped the divers off, they got the snorkel down there. Everyone could see the river was flooding. And although it felt like a pitiful effort, the 
rescuers reckon that Brendan could soon be grateful for a few extra centimetres of windpipe. I came in over the top of the um, kayak and we hooked the rope onto it, onto the bow that was uh, was jammed in between the uh, wedge, wedge and the rock. And, um, tried to lift him out. I thought it was just going to be a straightforward job, but. Uh, it was jammed well and truly. You know, I can lift 500 kilos with this helicopter. I full, full power and just wouldn't budge. In the helicopter, it was, it was very difficult to see because you know, I had the doors off. I was leaning out the door. And at this time, uh, due to the shape of the wedge, we decided to try um, hauling it sideways, which is a little bit difficult operation, lifting sideways with a helicopter. The biggest thing that struck me about the whole operation is, you know, after that first lift when we couldn't, when I, you know, we couldn't shift it. I, you know, I knew that you know I was his only hope. There was no way he was going to get out any other way, and we just sort of put that a little bit more in. And... At ten to seven that night, Brendan Godwin was popped out of his kayak. He'd been trapped for six and a half hours. His kidneys had failed. A dialysis machine kept him alive for weeks, and his legs needed surgery before he'd walk again. Two years later, Brendan and Cherie were reunited with his rescuers. See ya. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to the rest area. Yeah. How are you? Fine, fine. Hi. Well, words can't really describe it, but thanks is about all you can say. It wasn't for you guys, well, no. It was just really, really thanks. Thank you very much. To me, I did what I, I would hope someone would do if it was me. Every single person that was involved in that whole incident, if one person was missing, then we might not have had Brendan might not be alive. I know I still think about it a lot. Just wake up at nights and a bloody ball of sweat, thinking, Jesus, man. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. Oh, we're not really heroes. We would, would, would help anyone, no matter what they're in. Any trouble. Whether it was for a neighbor or something, we'll go and pick them up. We hope it never has to happen again, but we'd be there, and um, I believe the same people would attempt the same thing again. Well, you know, I, I look at these jobs as, as just part of my work, really, my job. We, we do all the training for it. But as far as I think the guys in the water were the heroes, you know, they were outstanding. Makes you grow up quite quickly. Um, you look at things in a completely different way, I think. Brendan survived because he was well trained and managed to hold off the panic of drowning. Not everyone is so lucky. Whenever you're on the water, remember, take all the precautions you've heard about and always have help nearby. <laughs>